Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. In part one of this presentation, physicist Eugene Bagashoff began his analysis of the ongoing mysteries surrounding the first ever so-called interstellar asteroid, Oumuamua. Eugene scrutinized the rather surprising hypothesis that the object is not natural, but rather a kind of alien technology. That hypothesis arose primarily from Oumuamua's peculiar acceleration as it moved away from the Sun. But as Eugene will explain, this is certainly not the first instance that the velocity of an object in our solar system has puzzled astronomers. Only one of several enigmas Oumuamua presents. Based on the limited available data, Eugene continues his analysis of this intriguing celestial traveler. So it seems that so far there is no clear consensus on the possible sources of Oumuamua's acceleration, nor there is a consensus on whether this object should be considered a comet or an asteroid, or even an alien spacecraft. Just to be clear, I would like to draw here a baseline, a ground zero so to speak, representing the actual raw observations to clearly show what is inferred on top of that and to take it with a pinch of salt by default. And actually, we know really not much. Firstly, we saw a moving dot in the sky, only a few pixels across even as observed by the best available telescopes. Multiple observations from various facilities during few months indicate that this is not some kind of visual artifact, but a real celestial body. The object also demonstrated somewhat irregular but still periodic changes in brightness, the ratio between maximal and minimal optical energy flux being roughly equal to 10 and the period of brightness change being roughly 8 hours. And that is pretty much it. Everything else is speculation, so should be critically evaluated and not taken as fact. Especially, I might add with a bit of humor, the things I would be proposing a bit later in this video and in the next one. By the way, the analysis of the changes in brightness of Oumuamua, as for example is shown in the paper The Excited Spin State of Oumuamua, could also lead to a conclusion that it is very oblate rather than very oblong, so it could as well be pancake shaped, so to speak, rather than cigar shaped, as it is almost uniformly acknowledged now in the media and even the research papers. This is one of the reasons why one should be careful with the infamous artist's impressions of various objects and processes that might be depicted totally wrong depending on the correctness of the assumptions that they are based on. In previous videos, I myself have used the initial assumption about the probable oblong shape, yet I've clearly stated that it is a conjecture obtained from modeling, assumptions about the albedo, etc., and what is really observed is only changes in brightness. We don't really know yet, and maybe would never know, what the actual shape of the object is. The pancake shape, obviously, would be somewhat more consistent with the solar sail scenario that was described in the previous Space News video on the topic. I should note that there was another piece of observational data that was collected by various facilities, and that is the spectrum of the object, although with a caveat that since those were mostly Earth-based telescopes, only visible part of the spectrum was recorded. The spectrum seems pretty dull, and not too different with respect to the spectra of the small bodies in the solar system. Some authors have suggested, see for example the paper called Oumuamua is Hot, Imaging Spectroscopy in Search of Meteor Activity, that the smoothness of Oumuamua's spectrum means that it should have been formed in some relatively warm conditions. But then again, we know that even cometary dust contains high temperature silicates, so that really doesn't change anything, at least in the EU perspective. By the way, I'm really baffled by the fact that none of the available X-ray telescopes in space have performed any observations of the object. I personally believe that if there was some electrical activity on the surface, which is not guaranteed given all the object's peculiarities, yet still possible, then it could have been detected in the X-ray frequency range. I'll remind the viewer that it is quite typical for the bodies in the solar system to demonstrate potential differences of few hundred volts between their surfaces or atmospheres and the ambient solar wind around them. Such potential difference was observed at Saturn's moon Hyperion when it zapped the Cassini space probe with a stream of electrons accelerated by a potential difference of about 200 volts. The same negative potential of 200 to 500 volts was observed by Rosetta space probe at the comet 67P. 
And there have been detection of X-rays from Pluto's atmosphere in the same energy range, which I've already reported in the video called Pluto's X-rays Baffle Scientists at the Thunderbolts Project YouTube channel. The detection of these X-rays, accompanied by the focusing of the solar wind ions at Pluto, as if attracted by the electric field, in my opinion seems to indicate the negative charge of Pluto's atmosphere with the appropriate potential of about 300 to 600 volts, which seems entirely consistent with the previous measurements done at other bodies, as well as modeling of the behavior of asteroids and the moons of Mars, where it is also suggested that even the solar wind flow itself should cause potential differences of the order of hundreds of volts across the surface. So it wouldn't be unexpected if Oumuamua would actually emit in the soft X-ray range with energies of photons of about 3 to 700 electron volts just because of the electric discharging between the surface and the solar wind plasma. Yet given the somewhat unique character of this body, it would have been even more interesting to see whether that would actually be the case. Unfortunately, since the object cannot be seen anymore, it is possible that we will never know. Now I wish to dive deeper into hypothetical area and discuss some of the ideas I've had in the recent weeks while trying to figure out the peculiar behavior of Oumuamua in the light of research papers mentioned in the previous video. First of all, I should note that the radial acceleration away from the sun that was supposedly observed while tracking Oumuamua's position is not very different from the inwards acceleration of the Pioneer 10 and 11 probes, widely known as the Pioneer anomaly. Obviously the direction of acceleration is the opposite, but the effect is pretty similar and there is only one order of magnitude difference in terms of its intensity if one uses the simple 1 over r squared law and corrects for the much farther position of pioneers at the time of the detection of the anomaly. Now the scientific community for the most part agrees that pioneer anomaly might be explained by the anisotropic heat emission by the probes themselves. So supposedly they were decelerated by the infrared photons emitted by themselves roughly in the direction of their motion, that is away from the sun, and thus slightly decelerated. It is quite peculiar that the acceleration remained roughly constant even though the heat output from the probe's radioisotope thermal generators was dropping with time, and quite significantly. To be honest, I haven't found any explanation of how this fact fits in the accepted scenario, yet I cannot claim that such an explanation does not exist. What I can claim is that the same anomaly was also observed at Ulysses and Galileo space probes, although the later assessment seems to have raised doubts about it, as some scientists believed that the accuracy of the measurements of these probes' trajectories and velocities was not enough to make a clear conclusion. Unfortunately, it is also not clear whether Pioneer anomaly was observed or not for Cassini, the two Voyagers, and New Horizons probes. Voyagers and Cassini periodically fired their thrusters and changed attitude, so it would definitely hide the possible anomalous acceleration signal. And New Horizons team comments on this subject are pretty vague and ambiguous, so I have not seen any explicit statement about whether they even checked for the possible Pioneer anomaly with their probe. However, one presentation I saw once claimed that New Horizons team simply did not have the money to perform Doppler tracking of the spacecraft, and thus no data with enough precision was available in the first place. But anyway, over the years, many different alternative explanations of the Pioneer anomaly appeared, such as, for example, the one proposed by Modified Newtonian Dynamics, or MOND, developed by Mordechai Milgram, or the one proposed by the Modified Inertia Theory, developed by Mike McCulloch. I would not describe these in detail, I would just note that the anomaly itself indicates that there might be something wrong in the way we understand the behavior of bodies in the outer solar system, that is roughly from the orbit of Jupiter and beyond. Generally speaking, perhaps our misunderstanding of the behavior of these probes out there is caused by the inherent extremity of the conditions in the appropriate areas, by the degree of removal of these probes from the everyday experience of humankind, so that their motion can no longer be described by the simple laws that we are quite satisfied with looking from where we are. I would briefly touch on this subject again in the next video, but right here I just want to say that maybe Oumuamua's unusual acceleration is also caused by the extreme trajectory it was traveling along. 
Maybe our understanding of the motion of celestial bodies is already being tested at this kind of motion. In this regard, I'm very interested if there would appear some anomalous acceleration of a Parker solar probe, which is going to orbit the Sun faster than any previous spacecraft did before. Who knows, maybe it would also detect some unusual acceleration or something like that. Now, going a bit closer to the Electric Universe interpretations, there is an interesting paper that, among other things, considers a possible impact of Lorentz force on the motion of spacecraft. It is indeed possible that the two pioneers actually have had some electric charge, and thus the magnetic fields in interplanetary plasma could have altered their motion. The authors of this paper do not think it would have a big impact, since they place the upper limit on the charge of the pioneer probes on the order of 10 to the minus 7th coulombs. Yet it is possible that they underestimate the charge or the magnetic field strength in the interplanetary medium. I should also note that even the ambient solar wind has an electric field to it, the so-called motional electric field, because it is a flowing magnetized plasma and technically might be considered as a moving conductor in a magnetic field of its own, which would create an appropriate electric field through induction. And it is not impossible that such a field would also impact the charged space probe in some way. Obviously, the same line of reasoning applies to Oumuamua. Another thing that might be of importance is a simple electrostatic attraction or repulsion. If an object such as Pioneer Space Probe or Oumuamua has some electric charge and there is a non-zero net charge of plasma around it, it would be subjected to acceleration by electrostatic forces. Usually such possibility is ignored because it is considered that the large-scale electric fields in plasma are shielded by the redistribution of charges in plasma itself, the so-called Debye screening. Yet it might be the case that some other mechanism is responsible for overcoming this screening. One idea that's been circulating in the EU community for quite some time is that the cosmic plasmas, including obviously the solar wind plasma, might have an array of the so-called plasma double layers embedded into them, so that on large scales the fields might be damped, yet locally there might be observed layers of positive and negative charges traveling together, something like a train of capacitors following each other one by one, if you like. So in my opinion, it is not impossible that these double layers with the electric fields associated with them is what might cause the accelerations that we observe. Aside from pioneer anomaly, there is another known but yet unexplained phenomenon that I should mention here, and that is so-called flyby anomalies. The matter is, various spacecraft have experienced unexplained accelerations while performing flyby maneuvers around the Earth and possibly other planets, the most recent reported case being the apparent anomaly in Juno motion during its close approach to Jupiter. The additional speed gained during these anomalous events is generally pretty small, of the orders of millimeters or centimeters per second, yet the precision of our measurements allows us to detect this discrepancy. And so far there is no consensus about what might be the reason. It is not impossible that this could also be explained by spacecraft electric charge that interacts with the magnetosphere of a planet and or with the electric fields and plasma currents present in it. After all, both Earth and Jupiter has quite strong dipolar magnetic fields and the studies of the flyby anomalies seem to indicate that it is connected to the asymmetry in the inbound and outbound equatorial angles, which might be explained by an asymmetric interaction with the planet's magnetic dipole during the flyby. Anyway, my point is that perhaps something like that might also be observed in case of Oumuamua. Now, obviously, for this object, the acceleration was not an event more or less localized in time, as with the flyby anomalies, but rather continuous. But at the same time, one might consider all of the heliosphere as being the domain of solar magnetosphere and plasma currents, so it is possible that the same effect have manifested itself as a continuous acceleration in this case. Going into even more hypothetical areas, at this point, I wouldn't rule out even various shady quasi-relativistic effects, such as the Woodward effect, for example, a hypothesized acceleration of bodies due to the energy transfer. This effect, as far as I know, is not yet acknowledged as experimentally proven, yet it is not impossible that it would be at some point, so perhaps it could also serve as an explanation. 
I have some even more shady idea that the acceleration outwards might be caused by some quasi-centrifugal force due to the rotation of the sun and thus of the plasma in the heliosphere, but that is a vague intuition rather than a coherent theory at this point. In general, it seems that Oumuamua's unusual acceleration, if it indeed has one, could lead us to reconsider many of the theories of how bodies behave while interacting with cosmic plasmas. I believe it is an important matter to be researched in the electric universe paradigm, since at the moment there is a definite lack of explanations in the astrophysics community, or rather the lack of consistency of these explanations with the observations. So it is a good opportunity to propose an alternative explanation and to improve the EU agenda at the same time, having a new set of observations available to refine the existing theories.